progressivists are really good at framing their issues in such a way that they can pass off their most extreme irrational craziness as just being a given, and in using the manipulation of language to make anyone who even questions anything they advocate seem like violent psychopaths. There's no in-between with these people. You either completely support and publicly celebrate every bizarre sexual practice that comes along, or else you're a, quote, bigot, unquote, who just wants to kill gay people. You can't, for instance, merely suggest that people treat their sexuality the way the ACLU expects people to treat their religion, meaning keep it completely secret at home and not air it in public. It has to be either shouted from the rooftops as a source of public pride, or else condemned to be burned at the stake. No third options or compromises are ever considered. Take, for instance, the Obama administration's recent decree-slash-threat to educators, known as the Dear Colleague Letter. This effectively has the force of law to make a radical change in how most public schools and public school programs work without the voice of local parents and educators having any input. But if you even question it, you will quickly find yourself rhetorically pushed into the same category as the Westboro Baptist Church, if not the Nazis. And that is just not a reasonable way to approach public issues. Instead of proposing a new law where an issue can become a matter of public debate and all concerned can engage in the political process to reach a conclusion, the new way to govern is to reimagine an old law to already mean whatever it is you want your new policy to be, and just call this, quote, significant guidance, unquote, despite this issue not having been debated or even anticipated when the law was passed. Or even, in some cases, the law's supporters having specifically assured the rest of us beforehand that it did not mean exactly what it is now being reimagined to mean. This totalitarian strategy of course works best after first taking the precaution of passing so many laws that you will be essentially guaranteed to be able to dig up something that sounds vaguely like whatever it is you now want to enforce, no matter what policy you now want to enforce. This whole process of reimagining older texts is of course completely destructive to the fundamental concept of written law sending us all back to arbitrary despotism. If this really was in the law, then there would be no need to send out a papal bull like this. In case you haven't heard, the Dear Underlings letter requires the opening of girls' changing rooms to teenage boys who call themselves transgender, and I suppose if they start showing physical signs of arousal, then they can just claim to be transgender lesbians. This is only one of the many absurdities which the Obama administration is trying to force on public schools at this time, and they are very clear that this is what they intend, and that it's not open to public debate, because of course it's not. Look at this paragraph, quote, A school's Title IX obligation to ensure non-discrimination on the basis of sex requires schools to provide transgender students equal access to educational programs and activities, even in circumstances in which other students, parents, or community members raise objections or concerns. As is consistently recognized in civil rights cases, the desire to accommodate others' discomfort cannot justify a policy that singles out and disadvantages a particular class of students. You see how manipulatively framing the issue works to get them the result they want? Gratifying some teenage boy's desire to watch female classmates undress or shower has now been defined as a Title IX obligation, while your daughter's desire to not have teenage boys in the room while she's changing her clothes to participate in school sports has now been framed as mere discomfort. Because she's not in a protected class. At least, not anymore. Good job, feminism! And if you think she's going to be able to claim sexual harassment to counter this, then think again, because you're being transphobic. And 
transphobic is going to beat sexist in this retarded game of rock paper racism that our contemporary public discourse has been reduced to. There are people who are higher up on the progressive stack than your feminist daughter is, and they're the ones calling the shots now. The only chance she's going to have is if she turns lesbian to get more victim points. But on second thought, lesbian might not cut it anymore. It might not be enough to beat transgender by itself, so she'd better claim to be a Muslim as well. Or maybe she could convince her boyfriend to say he's transgender too, so he can come in there and deal with the gawkers. I mean, how many levels of this maze of stupidity will we need to get through to get around what the Obama administration is trying to do here? I have to give them some credit, though. Unlike in their supporting a ban on conversion therapy video, they have made at least some attempt to begin by defining their terms this time. Their definitions are stupid, arbitrary, and still have glaring ambiguities, but they did at least make some attempt to define their terms. Let's look at their definitions. 1. Gender identity refers to an individual's internal sense of gender. A person's gender identity may be different from or the same as the person's sex assigned at birth. The obvious thing to notice about this is that it is completely subjective entirely based on feelings and not on facts. By the word internal, they are referring to whatever the person says about themselves at the moment, not something we can cut open or x-ray their internal organs in order to confirm, so they clearly mean the mental sense of internal. But it's much less clear what they mean by gender. What about people who sexually identify as something other than male and female? Is wolf a gender? What about that guy who sexually identifies as an aircraft carrier? Okay now, how many of you have played musical instruments before? Do instruments of torture count? No. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Horseradish is not an instrument either. They're going to need Squidward here, because this definition is completely open to every alternative gender identity that emerges from the dark, festering abyss of madness that is internet gender activism. You'll find this openness to just about everything to be a common problem with all their attempts at definition. A proper definition, according to Aristotle, needs at least two things, the genus and the specific difference. The genus tells us the general category the thing fits into, and the specific difference tells us how to tell it apart from other things. These provide us with the genus, but they're missing the specific difference. Look at the second definition they give us. 2. Sex assigned at birth refers to the sex designation recorded on an infant's birth certificate should such a record be provided at birth. So. Gender is here taken to be different from sex in that gender is completely subjective while sex is on paper, which means that it's still subjective. What if some misguided mother under the influence of Tumblr, which seems to make people so crazy that it really should be classified as an illicit substance, assigns their infant the sex of astral star blossom or something like that and that's what gets on their birth certificate. Neither of these definitions refer to objective biological facts or anything anybody can actually check. Number three. Transgender describes those individuals whose gender identity is different from the sex they were assigned at birth. They are here using the terms they've defined above gender identity and sex assigned at birth to define this new term. So let's unpack this sentence by replacing the terms with the definitions they provided. It says, transgender describes those individuals whose internal sense of gender is different from the sex designation recorded on their birth certificate should such a record be provided at birth. What if such a record was not provided at birth? This definition doesn't really cover that case. It could be that a person without a birth certificate just can't be transgender by definition because the definition is in terms of whether they have a birth certificate. 
But at least President Obama can be transgender, so that's a relief. Then it goes on. A transgender male is someone who identifies as male but was assigned the sex of female at birth. You know, assigned, just completely arbitrarily, you know, with no actual reason for it. A transgender female is someone who identifies as female but was assigned the sex of male at birth. Just completely arbitrarily. We just we just have no idea. In fact, I'm sure that there's somebody who hangs around the maternity ward and just flips coins, you know? It's just no one knows. Now, this sounds like they're going back to reinforce the gender binary. The idea that there's only two genders, male and female. You know, that sane people believe. But elsewhere, the same letter says, quote, a school may not discipline students or exclude them from participating in activities for appearing or behaving in a manner that is consistent with their gender identity or that does not conform to stereotypical notions of masculinity or femininity. So, by usage and context, gender identity is clearly not restricted to just, quote, stereotypical notions of masculinity and femininity, unquote, which the rest of us just call sanity. It must include Tumblr-based life forms. So, moving right along, number four. Gender transition refers to the process in which transgender individuals begin asserting the sex that corresponds to their gender identity instead of the sex they were assigned at birth. Again, let's unpack this. Quote, Gender transition refers to the process in which those individuals whose internal sense of gender is different from the sex designation recorded on their birth certificate should such a record be provided at birth, begin asserting the sex that corresponds to their internal sense of gender instead of the sex designation recorded on their birth certificate should such a record be provided at birth. All the same problems exist for this convoluted definition as existed for the others. It goes on, though. During gender transition, individuals begin to live and identify as the sex consistent with their gender identity, aka internal sense of gender, and may dress differently, adopt a new name, and use pronouns consistent with their gender identity, aka internal sense of gender. Transgender, that big long convoluted definition, individuals may undergo gender transition, that other big long convoluted definition, at any stage of their lives and gender transition, long convoluted definition again, can happen swiftly or over a long period of time. What interests me the most here is the idea that this can happen swiftly. As the good book says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Can it happen within minutes? And can they transition back minutes later when their internal sense of gender identity changes? Like, can I transition to being female while the cheerleading squad is in the showers, but transition back to being male immediately afterwards? I certainly can under these definitions, as long as I have a birth certificate. <laughs> 